I'm Richard. We're at the Open Air Blues Festival in Brisbane. With me is Daniel Nicole. You debuted in 2015, or your your debut album was Wolf Den? Mm-hmm. Why Wolf Den? What does that mean to you, the Wolf Den? Um, well, I, I wrote Wolf Den about basically growing up in the Kansas City music scene. And what the Wolf Den represents to me are those those no-name clubs that, you know, you only know how to get to, you only know where they are if you know how to get to them, or you're with somebody that knows how to get to them, and, you know, they're, just like the lyrics say, you know, it's down by the tracks, it's usually by some railroad tracks, and so the, the Wolf Den is, is, you know, whatever kind of CD venue, you know, where most of the blues clubs would be in, in any given town or city. Kansas City, Missouri. Mm-hmm. Yes, there's a rich, rich music history and a lot of, a lot of more underground clubs, smaller venues, um, that you know would just go into the wee hours of the night. Thirty seaters. Or... Yeah, yeah, anywhere from thirty to fifty, just real small. Like somebody's house was converted into into a venue, you know, and you have these they call the juke joint. Juke joint. Juke, yeah. And your first band was trampled underfoot, tough. Mm-hmm. Uh, was it cool playing with your brothers? Oh, it was wonderful. It was wonderful. We had we had many, many amazing adventures together. Yeah. I was, you know, I always would say that I was the most, I was the safest person wherever we went because I had my two older brothers with me. <laughs> right. But, you know, we got to, we got to spend many years playing, a, playing a lot of really great music together. In 2019, you got the Blues Music Award uh, for Best Female Blues artist and mm-hmm. best bass player. Mm-hmm. How do you feel about that? <laughs> well, um, you know, it's it, I don't know. Awards are awards are very hard for me. You know, I I play music because I love the art. Um, but to to be recognized by peers in the industry and to to be named among my heroes, you know, that I grew up listening to. Uh, like Larry Fulcher on bass and stuff, you know, just to be recognized amongst them. It, it's a very, it's a very humbling experience. And back in 2014, I was nominated as bass player of the year, and I was the first woman to ever be nominated in the history. First woman, really? Mm-hmm, in the history of the Blues Music Awards for, for the bass guitar. Yeah. Weird. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> it's a man's world, you know, James said it. <laughs> um, yeah. But, uh, but yeah, you know, and I've been, I've been very blessed to, to receive that honor. This, this is my fifth one this year. It's amazing, as well, but there are many female artists in the industry in the States. There are, there are. I'm, I'm thankful for that. I love seeing, I, I really love seeing women stepping up on drums and bass and in, on instruments where you don't normally hear them, especially like horns and stuff like that. So mm-hmm. it's really great to see. You know, Taikira uh, Jackson from Southern Avenue. She's one of my favorite drummers on the planet. You know, Deanna Bogart's an incredible saxophonist. And so it's, it's really great to see these strong women um, paving their way in the, in the men's world. <laughs> How do you keep a balance between being a singer and a wife and a mother? You know, it's just you, the, the balance is just, it's all constant. You know, it's just, it, it, you, you don't, I don't really separate myself because my music is, is who I am, you know, and I write, I write my songs and it's about my life and it's about my experiences and, and it's about being a mother and a wife and, and, and a sister and, and to, trying to find myself in, in, in all of that because it's easy to lose. It's easy to lose yourself when every day is a grind, you know, and it's a new, but it, and it's a new adventure. Um, but I just, I think I've just been doing it so long. It's just second nature to me now. <laughs> just, you just got to keep rolling. And I enjoy the time that I get with my children and they understand that it's a legacy. My, my parents were musicians. Their, their elders were musicians as well. So they understand that it runs in the family and they'll get sucked into it if they yeah. want to. Oh, okay. <laughs> they, they know they love, they love playing themselves as well. Was the lockdown a blessing or a curse for you? Well, it was both. It was both for, you know, I, I got to be mom for almost two mm-hmm. years straight. And I mean, it was, it was wonderful. And, and, you know, and on the, on the negative side, you know, of course it was, it was hard not playing music and hard not having that income and finding other ways to make it work. 
Um, but I really got to figure out like who I am outside of music because I started touring when I was 19 and I've been singing in my father's band since I was 12. So I've been doing it a very long time and, and it just consumes you, you know, especially when you're a touring musician, not a huge AAA artist. It's constant. You can't take three months off to write an album, you know, the way that the way that the big artists do. And so to so find the strength, well the road. yeah, yeah, and finding strength and finding inspiration and finding the time, you're always you're always kind of just searching searching for that little pocket of privacy to do things, you know. And you just you have to figure out how to how to live socially. There's not very much privacy. Walter Trout played at Brazoi a few days earlier. Uh, I read about I read your bio and. At one point, you worked with him. Yeah, yeah, he was on the Cry No More album. He played guitar on the song "Burning for You." Um, but we've also, you know, I've known Walter since before his liver transplant. So I, mm-hmm. since since I've just first started playing music, and uh, so I've, I've been blessed to know him for for a couple decades now. And I mean, he's just incredible. <laughs> Is this your first time in Romania? Uh, no, no, we did um, we did a Sig Sorara. I think that's Siggy Shaw. Oh, okay. it's close. It was close. Um, but we did that festival back in 2017. Um, but other than that, I this I, this is my second time to Romania. What do you think of Brazil so far? What you've seen? Oh, it's got the cool vibe. It's got such a cool vibe. We stepped out front for a minute, and everybody's just everybody's really loving. It's it's a very loving community. It feels like, and they feel it seems like they're very grateful. For this festival and and for the live music, you know. So we're looking forward to it. Thank you very much for your time. Good luck with your show tonight. Oh, thank you. And the music and everything. Yeah. And we're waiting for you to come on down to the Open Air Blues Festival in Brazil.